happy Saturday guys this is kind of a follow-up video to the ghost mower video it's called um, this mower is possessed if you haven't watched that video go check it out if you don't know who I am you're watching <laughs> talk about on this episode well if you haven't seen any of the videos I've done on this mower um, you really need to go check those out first I'm not vying for views I'm not vying for credits I'm just asking you to go do that before you watch this video and that will help you catch up to what what, what I'm gonna be talking about before we get into it though I want you to check out this graph especially if you're new to the channel this graph shows that about 20% of the people that are watching my channel are actually subscribed to the channel. Guys, if you don't do anything else, even if you don't watch the video all the way through, like this video and subscribe to the channel. That helps me um, fit in more with the algorithm and helps them get me more recognition. I would greatly appreciate that if you would do that. I would love to have you be a part of the Big South family. Okay, on with what we're going to be doing today. I've had to put a lot of money into this mower to get it even movable again. This mower sat behind the office over there uh, for probably mm, three months now and has not been able to be driven. You can't mow, couldn't mow with it. The deck wouldn't stay up. I'm going to show you all that here in just a few minutes. But if you're in the market for a a good a good a homeowner grade or residential mower I would not consider the Aaron's Icon Envy um, they're just not built to the standards that in my opinion and I'll you'll you'll be seeing what I mean in just a, in just a few moments but they're not even built to in my opinion the standards of craftsman mowers zero turn mowers that is they just they're they're made of soft metal and I've got proof of everything I'm saying they're made of soft metal. They, if you it hit the least, little, even a root, the metal bends. And like I said, I've got proof of that. So if you're interested in, in learning more about what I'm talking about, stick around. It's going to get interesting. It's going to get hairy. And I'm going to try to keep it as short and sweet as I possibly can. So what have I had to do to this mower? Well, what, I, what haven't I had to do to it? The, the straw that broke the camel's back was when we were on a job and Nate come around uh, driving. Actually, we were working at a, a commercial job and he come uh, driving around the parking lot and this tire right here, you, this is it's your left, but it's my right. Um, this tire was dragging. It wouldn't roll. And it, it, it just, I mean... It had completely locked up. I thought it was the bearings. I did a bearing video on this machine. That's the second set of bearings I've had to put on this machine. And it's only got 191 hours on it. So there you go. This mower's uh, almost 15 months old. It only has 191 hours. And you think, well, you know, if you're using it as a, as a residential, 191 hours is a lot of hours. Well, yes and no. It is a lot of hours because I use it probably, at that time I was using it probably three times a week. And I was using it uh, maybe an hour, hour and a half at the time. Going through small gates, getting into small backyards, things like that that you can't get into with a 52 inch zero turn mower, which is what I have on the trailer back there. If, you're, if you've been watching my channel any time at all, you know what I run. I'm not going to go into that. So... I'm going to take you around before I show you what we had to do. I'm going to take you around and address some of the other issues that I've addressed in the past that are still giving me issues, but that I haven't been able to work on. And the main reason I haven't is because they don't stop the machine from functioning. You'll understand more when I get, when I get to, uh, to that. Okay. A couple of areas that I'm ha still having issues with, um, you know, this tire right here, that's the, the back uh, left tire. If you look at the machine from the front, it's the back left tire over here. 
in the video in the ghost mower video this is the tire that was flat well i just aired it up uh it I was it was sitting over there in the same spot it was in and it was already flat well i don't know how long it holds air because it, we use the mower so little that it, it um you know it just sits and goes flat now the if you if you haven't seen let me put because the gnats are terrible out here if you haven't seen the video i did on this one the thumbnail says i'm in hell i'll show you exactly where i filmed that video i filmed that video sitting right there this is my this is my office driveway i filmed that video sitting right there and nothing much has changed except for what i've had to do to the machine and and i'm not don't get me wrong i'm not balking and squawking but aaron's has not lifted a finger to do anything to help me out of this situation nothing now i've had a lot of comments and i'm going to address it real quick i've had a lot of comments well you know gravely and aaron's is made by the same company well so is coke and so is um well let me let me back up so is mellow yellow and pepsi but they're two different divisions. PepsiCo owns Mellow Yellow and they own Pepsi. But they're two different divisions. They do two separate things. Well, same thing is true for this. They these are two different divisions made by this made in two different machines, two different divisions, two different quality control um, parameters made by the same company. And that's all I'm going to say about that now. I'm going to flip the seat up, but I'm going to try to hide as much, as best I can. Now, I I talked about in the, the I'm in hell video about these things right here. You see how loose that is? Look at there. And guys, with 191 hours on it, that should not be like that. That should be good and tight. But this thing right here is still, it, it, especially in the summertime, this, this metal right here is so flimsy, and I'm not trying to repeat what I've already said, but that's the only way I know how to put it. It's so thin, it's like a 32nd of an inch thick. And it, it, over a period of time, going doing this like that, this metal will bend up. It will actually flex upward like this and prevent you from engaging... That safety switch, let me let me do this. See that safety switch right there? It's right there. It prevents you from being able to engage it. Now I want you to look at that. And everything I before I had let me uh let me do this. Before I started shooting this video, I went through and made sure all those joints were tight. Now, that's the truth. It was sitting over there, right where we filmed at. And I made sure all the joints were tight. All the bolts, all the uh, the holders, everything is tight. They're tight. And that's just one of the issues that I'm having with this machine. I've had a couple of comments say they were looking at this machine. That, that My video shied them away from it. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I want that understood. I am not trying to hurt anyone. What I'm trying to do with these videos is call attention to something that needs to be changed. And if enough people see these videos, maybe, maybe it will get Aaron's Co's attention and they will redesign this mower back to the way it was in 2022, 2021, 2020. And I think they, I think they designed it that way from 2018 to 2022. In 2023, they redesigned this thing and they turned it into a piece of junk. Now, that's just my opinion. But anyway, um, the engine is a Kawasaki FR651V. Uh, it has 21 and a half horsepower. This motor runs like a champ. Look at this. It has a uh, Hydra Gear 2800 pumps. They run, they work fine, they do good. They, uh, the, now guys, if you hadn't seen the ghost more video, you need to go check that out. 
Nate did all the editing on that video, and he, guys, he knocked it out of the park. He did a phenomenal job. But this logo right here, we had to glue it back on because it was rubber cement. And in the heat, rubber cement is going to let go, and that's what happened. But we found it, we cleaned it up, we glued it back on for that video. Well, the the uh, the 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 tire now this tire here, this tire here is fine. It has no holes in it. It never leaks down. It holds 14 pounds of air, which is what's on the sidewall. And this one here, this one here has a hole in the sidewall. Now, why is that important? Well, number one, you can't plug it. Number two, you can't patch it. And number three, the reason why it's like that is because the sidewall, even though it's a four-ply tire, it's not a heavy-duty tire. Now, what do I mean by that? Heavy-duty. Heavy-duty tires are reinforced on the inside. Four-ply tires, just your regular average four-ply tire is not. And it's very, very, very puncture sensitive. I'm fixing to show you some in just a minute. But I took it to, let me turn the camera around. I took it to a tire shop and they said, we can't do anything with it. It's the holes in the sidewall. I said, well, what can I do about it? He said, well, you can either put, put, put a tube in it or <clears throat> you can just live with it like it is. He said, how often do you use the mower? I said, now, probably once every two weeks, he said, I'd air it up and go on. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, I'm going to um, I'm gonna put a, video, a little small video clip right here. This seat is absolutely a piece of garbage. Now, the seat here is very comfortable. It's not the best in the world, but it's comfortable. But I want you to look. I want you to look at the lack of quality in the material that, and the way they build these seats. This is plywood, guys. Plywood. You can see right there. Plywood. Now, you saw the condition of that seat. Now, here's what, here's what I come up with, and thus far it's done pretty good. I had to take this seat. You see how it is stretched. I mean, it is stretched to hell and back, so to speak. And I had to stretch this up. I had, to, I had to apply heat to this, guys, to get it to stretch right. And then I hooked these, this plastic gizmo right here. I hooked it back together. And I put this center uh, screw in it to hold it. And when I did, the edges popped off. So I got them hooked back, and I put screws in it. And it's through the wood. The bottom of the wood is right here. And I put screws in here. Hopefully, it's not going to rip or tear. I don't know if it will or not. If, if it does, I'll bring it back to you and let you see it. But for now, it's holding pretty good. Now, I am going to get down on the ground because the next thing I've got to show you, I've got to be laying on the ground. Well, let me do this first. You see the deck hanger right there, that, that silver thing, aluminum? Well... That's one of the main reasons why when you saw that video, if you haven't, guys, go to, it's only five, it's just under six minutes long, and it is cool as crap. But that right there was one of the main reasons why we couldn't get the deck to stay up. Now, you could raise it up. It was raised, matter of fact, in the video, it was raised up. It was raised up all the way, but it was sitting on the ground, and I'm fixing to show you why. Now, you see... How this has been welded right there I did that and I'll, I'm fixing to show you why here in a minute but you see this hole I'm gonna get more in front of it you see this hole right here well the other side cracked here and here and then the weld broke loose over here on the side and the whole thing on this side over here on the opposite side it fell off and I'm not trying to repeat what Ron White said. It fell off. But when it fell off, we were on a job, and it did spin me into a dimension of pissed off I've never been in in my life. Now, let me show you what I had to do. You see this hole? Now, you see the plate right here? It's not painted. I didn't paint it for this specific purpose. 
because I knew these videos were coming. Now, what I had to do, I'm going to try to get the camera under there where you can see. There's a plate back here. I hope that camera's picking that up. There's a plate back there, and there's a plate here. Well, what I did, I took, put that plate back there, and I spot welded it here on the bottom. When I got it spot welded where it would hold on its own, I went in this hole right here on that side over there, and I filled, I welded that plate in from the inside, and I filled this whole thing in with weld to make it one solid piece. And then I put this plate on the top of it. I had, to, I had to do some grinding to get it down. But I put this piece on top of it, and then I welded it down. Is it the prettiest welding in the world? No, it's not. But it has been functional. And now this was done, uh, you know, uh, probably a couple weeks ago. So that's why it looks like it is. I have not put any paint on it. I didn't want to put paint on it for that very reason. The next thing that we had to do is I had to change... I had to change these tires. And I'm fixing to show you why. Let me put the tripod back on. Let me put the camera back on the tripod. All right. Remember me telling you I had to, we had to change the front tires on it? Well, here's why. These are the old tires. Now, you look at them and say, well, Brian, they look almost identical. Well, in, in build specs, they are. They're a four-ply tire. Those are four ply tires. These are, uh, I think they are, let me see. These are 11 by 6 by 5. Those are 11 by 6 by 5. So, looking at these tires, what would you think would be the difference? They look almost identical. But, here's the difference. Have you ever looked at a regular tire? Uh, the bead the bead is this part right here that goes up against the rim well those tires right there guys i'm sorry i have to keep putting my glasses on but the gnat i mean you see me doing this in my ears it's the gnats they're terrible we haven't had any rain and i mean we got about a 40 second shower the other day i did a, a reel with my hands up in there saying it's raining well it lasted for about 40 seconds that was it and that's the that's the only rain we've had now in almost a month and it is it is super 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 dry and today it was 101 degrees so if you don't do anything else if you've made it this far please pray for it to rain in the fort bragg area of north carolina please but anyway the difference between these tires the first difference and i did not know this the guy at the tire shop showed me those tires there, the bead is slick. It's, it's smooth. It has no grooves, no raised areas or nothing. Well, I want you to look at this. I can't do it. I want you to look at this tire right here. Look at that. Those are cooling fins. They, 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 that's what they call them anyway, for cooling the tire. Why would you need to cool a tire on a lawnmower that only goes five and a half miles an hour? I mean, for real, seriously, why would you need to cool a tire on a lawnmower? Even if it's sitting still in 120 degree heat, which we don't have here in North Carolina, why would you need to cool a tire? I don't care if you're in the desert of, of uh, Nevada, why would you need to put cooling fins on a tire? Yeah, put cooling fins on an engine, I can understand. But on a tire? A tire, for God's sake. You don't need cooling fins on a tire that's the reason and this is what the tech guy at the tire shop told me that's the reason why these tires kept popping the bead because it could not get a good seal on the rim and those rims are not the highest quality rims either the guy at the tire shop told me that he said you might want to consider upgrading to a better rim i said what do you mean he said those rims there, the bead is only about that wide. And you can see right here, they're about maybe mm, just a hair over, maybe three, maybe five sixteenths of an inch. He showed me a rim he had that he sold. I didn't buy it, but he showed me a rim that he had, 
and the, the the bead on that rim was that wide now i want you, I want you to see the difference it was that wide and he said i can order you tires just like this that'll fit these rims and you won't never break a bead again and i said well i'm just trying to get the mower going because right now i can't use it at all i said the front tire won't roll and i said i'm trying to get it to where we can start using it again because we have small gates and stuff like that we have to go through and i've been having to weed eat a lot and i don't want to continue you doing that not when i've got a, a forty five hundred dollar mower sitting here that's paid for well anyway the next reason is these are four ply tires they're not heavy duty and the rubber in these things is thin as paper i want you to see this i'm not going to push hard can you see that let me get it a little bit closer you see that and i'm barely pushing on it these tires are thin as paper now why is that important well when they took when i took the tires to them i had to take them off the machine to take them to them and i said see if you can get these tires to hold air well you see one plug in i put that plug in it myself so they put air in it and they dipped it down in the solution there's nine holes in this tire nine nine and he said he said brian he said this and the, the same tire shop i took the tires to um get put on the gravely and i'll put a link in the description box below his name is cameron the same he's the same guy that told me this he said these tires are thin as paper he said a sand spur would put a hole in them a sand spur that's how thin the the, uh, the rubber is in these tires. Now, let me show you the other one. This tire here has five holes in it. I plugged this tire, my, this hole myself. It's got two plugs in it. Count them. A plug has two on uh, uh, each, each end. One, two, three, four. And it was still leaking. It was still leaking, and it had four more holes in it. So that tells you the quality of the tires they put on this machine. Now, I saved the best for last. Guys, you ain't going to believe this one. But before I show you, I want you to watch this video clip. Oh. Hello, old friend. Tires are flat. I want to get these forks straight. Hello, darling. All right, let's let's get back over here. Well, guys, here's the infamous craftsman I've been telling you about. Uh, I sold it to this gentleman, and he does lawn care on the side, and he also works on lawnmowers. Nate, kind of pan around and see. Mm -hmm. let him, let, just let the Pressure washers, generators. But what I wanted to point out to you, this mower is a 2005 machine. It's not a brand new machine, and it's been sitting under the trees, but... Uh, when I talked to the, the gentleman, his name is Doobie, uh, he said the, the engine started dropping oil pressure, and rather than run it until it quit, he's going to try to figure out what's wrong with it. Come around back, Nate, so they can see the, the engine is tarped. Rather than run it until it just completely quit. Ooh, gonna, what's that smell? It smells like some, something died. I don't know. It might be decomp up in them trees there. I don't know. But anyway. It's squirrel. Um... <laughs> Rather than run it until it just completely quit, he's going to try to fix it. Now come back to the back. Oh, a golf ball. Yeah. Look, guys, it's still got the original Kohler engine on it. And I told him I don't I don't know what else what I'll do when I see this thing. I might hug it. But now we're talking about the errands. Now nothing has been done to this machine. The only thing I did to it was I replaced the deck. That was it. And the seat. And I'll put a link in the description box below 
for the videos I did replacing both the deck and the seat. That's the only thing that I know of that's been done to this machine. But Nate, I want you to get down there and and, and really get close in on those forks. Because that's what I want the guys to see. Now guys, I want you to look at those forks. Those are the factory forks. This machine is a 2005 model, which makes it 19 years old. And it still got it's the a, factory forks. It's as, old, it's as old as I am. Yeah, exactly. It's not, Nate is 19 years old. He'll be 20 years old in November. This thing is a 2005, which means it was manufactured the year after Nate was born in November. So that tells you, and here's the thing, look at this. This has still got the factory, uh, I guess you call this the shoot guard. And now bring it in, bring it in here, Nate. You see these? Careful, spiderweb. Yeah, you see these spindles? That's what I've always said about this machine was the weak link. But he doesn't have the key. I'm going to see if the hour meter. No, the hour meter's not on and the key's not in here. I wish the key was in it. I'd like to turn that hour, the key on and see what the hour meter says. I used to hate this thing, but that's before we had the errands. But Now I'd give anything to have this thing back. As honest before God as I know how to be, and I'm a Christian man, I'm not going to stand here and deliberately tell you a lie. When I sold this thing to Mr. Doobie, it had 897 hours on it. And he's run it now for uh, the better part of a year and a half. He just told me about three weeks ago that he quit running it because the oil pressure had dropped in the engine and he didn't want to destroy the engine until he could find out what was causing the oil pressure drop. So he parked it. But if you look out through the area here, all we're surrounded by rental properties. And this, that's primarily what he used this for was to cut the rental properties. Now, that was the machine I used to run. That was the machine I replaced with this machine. That machine, finally, the engine finally gave up. But the engine had over 1,100 hours on it when it blew up. This one, you saw the forks on that one, on the Craftsman. You saw the forks on it. You saw the deck. You saw the rest of it. You saw the arms. That mower's got over a thousand hours on it. It's almost 20 years old. It, it ain't It ain't no wonder the engine gave out. It's that old. But you saw the forks. Now, I'm gonna show you the better of the two forks that came off this machine. And yes, I'll show you on the camera right now. Those are brand new forks. They're straight. Now, let me show you. Let me get you back in the where I was. I'm going to show you the better of the two. Now, I'm going to hold it as straight as I possibly can. This is the better of the two. Now, guys, I want you to understand something. We were only using this machine for small gates, doing small backyards, and small areas of grass. We were not running over curbs. We were not running, and I'm talk, talking residential yards now. We were not running over curbs. We were not running over parking pylons. We were not running over cur uh, parking bumpers. We were in small backyards with no patios, no nothing. Whatever was that we need to be weeded around, we weeded around it so we wouldn't have to get close to it with the machine. And this is the fork. Now, the forks here are bent a little bit, not bad, but I want you to look. Now, I'm going to hold this straight to the camera, as straight as I can. Look at this shaft. It's, bend, it's, it's bending this way. Look at it. Now, if you turn it this way, you can see the plate right here has bent, in, is bent down like that right here. I took it to a guy that I know I can trust that, that works metal. He didn't test the, the structure of this metal. I asked him, I said, have you ever worked on mower forks before? He said, no, in all honesty, I haven't. I said, well, if I looked at something, if you looked at something for me, 
do you think you might be able to to um, tell me what caused it? He said, maybe. And I showed him a picture. I didn't show him the fork because I hadn't gotten it off the machine yet. I showed him a picture of the machine. He said, the metal is too soft for the application. He said, the problem is, he said, that the, 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 he said, engineers do things different ways than m m you and I would do them. And this guy's one of my customers. His name is Cecil. He said, and he, he, he works, he used to work on heavy equipment. He owned his own dump trucks. He owned his own backhoes. He owned his own, owned his own bulldozer, stuff like that. So he knows steel. And he said, the only thing that would cause that is the fact that the metal, now listen to me, the metal in these forks is not sufficient for the weight of the machine and the application of use. And anytime you hit an obstacle, you're only doing five and a half miles an hour wide open. That's as fast as this machine will go in forward. It'll do, I think, three and a half in reverse, maybe four, and five, five, five and a half to six miles an hour forward. Guys, I can walk faster than that. Now, let me show you the, the worst one. This is not an obstacle, optical, obstacle, listen to me. This is not an optical illusion, I promise. Look at that fork. And a lot of people are telling me, where are you using the thing the wrong way? No, we weren't. I promise, we were not. We were not abusing it. We were not pond hopping with it. We were cutting small backyards going through small gates and doing small areas of grass only. And in 191 hours, this is the result. I mean, look at it. Look at it from this direction. I'll put it down here where the camera can actually see it. But uh, this piece right here is not only bent this way, it's also twisted inward like that. Now... You see, you see those scratch, those scuff marks right there? Let me make sure this is in the shot because I want you to see this. You see that scuff mark right there? Yeah, that's where the tire, that tire right there, the right one, the discharge side of the machine, it had locked up and was dragging the ground. It wouldn't roll. This one here, you can see just as plain as day, where the tire was rubbing, right there. I'm trying to get my hand out of the shot. There you go. You can see right there where the tire was rubbing. And you wondered why I titled my videos, I'm pissed, I'm in hell, and I'm still pissed. Guys, this thing has been a nightmare. And I'm not trying to put down on the errands. I am glad I was able to fix it to where we can start using it again. But my question is, how long is it gonna last now? All right. So, as I said, how long is it gonna last now? I don't know. I'm keeping these parts because if it, do, if it does the same thing again, I may be seeing what my options are. But to give you a rundown, I bought these tires off of Amazon, and I will leave a link in the description box below for the listing where I bought them from. And I will find the part numbers uh, for these forks. The forks were, uh, I think they were, they were between $63 and $68 a piece, somewhere in that range. I will, in the description box below, I will leave the part number and exactly what they cost uh, a piece and if you have a machine like this and you need to buy them you can contact your dealer with that part number and they can get them for you guys this should never happen you saw the video clip of that craftsman that craftsman is a 2005 model it's 19 years old and you saw the forks they were still in good shape now am i saying that craftsman is a better machine than this 
There are some aspects about it that are. There are some aspects about it that aren't. The deck isn't as good as the deck on this one. This one cuts wonderfully. I mean, it cuts beautifully. It stripes phenomenally if you care about striping. But the rest of the machine doesn't match up to the expectations of what they sell it as. That's, I'm just going to leave that right there. Is it as good as the Craftsman? Not really. Because the Craftsman held up. This one hasn't. Uh, I mean, you look. I mean, it, it, the, the sticks are all but wore out. You know, it just, I mean, it's just not, in my honest opinion, has, as someone who's done lawn care, landscaping, pressure washing, um, you know, haul off scrap metal, that's done this for 25 years if I had to do all over again I would look elsewhere I would not look at an errands but here here's the bottom line if you've made it this far this is what I want you to understand when my craftsman went down what happened the clutch fell off and it burred the end of the crankshaft and rather than spend two thousand dollars on a on a at that time a uh, 16 year old machine I just soon spend another couple of thousand, twenty five hundred dollars more and get a brand new machine with a warranty. And I thought that's what I was getting with this. And I had to have a machine in a hurry because I had customers that I had to take care of. Well, when I went into the dealer, they pointed me to this one right off the bat because I'm a I'm a gravely guy. And I guess they thought if you like gravely, you'll be satisfied with this errands. And I'm not. I mean I've got it fixed now, and I'm still not satisfied with it. And the reason why is because of all the monies I've had to put into it just to keep it going, keep it mobile, so I can use it, even though I spent the money I spent on it to buy it. So, it, it is it the dealer's fault? In a way, yes. Is it the dealer's fault that the build quality is absolute garbage? No, that's not the dealer's fault. The dealer didn't have anything to do with that. So that's going to do it, guys. I, I wanted to bring you this to show you why we did the ghost mower video. And again, if you haven't seen it, it's just under six minutes long. Go check that video out. It's, it's phenomenal. But we wanted to do that as kind of a lighthearted thing. But that's going to do it. Um... I hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you on the next one, guys. This is Brian reminding you to live big, live southern, and live outdoors. Until we meet again, folks, have a good one.